My question is around is is is, is a more more I suppose technical. It's around the yeah. um, description of the uh, two of the elements on the eightfold path. Um, well, actually, maybe I'll say three because there's the 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 imaging, the communication, and the action. Mm -hmm. And um, today, when you talked about the action. Um, it, it was an expression around the micro actions in, in, in the mind, my, mental movements. Mm -hmm. And I just picked up as well that about the, the nature of action could also, the way I, I suppose I'd seen this before today was the action is the gross level action. So you've got imaging that comes first in the mind. And then if you don't catch it there, something unwholesome might come out of your mouth. And if you don't catch it at that point, some uh, unskillful, bigger action might might manifest. So I just wanted to ask you about the, the combination of imaging and movements of mind, and then the action in the um, in in the, the the action step. Well, see, like when you're talking about the community, that's when you were talking from that angle, from what you were saying about action. But mm -hmm. it, definitively, I, there definitely is the thing that's going on with the human being about us. We're the ones responsible for what we walk around and hold in our image in our mind. And that that has to do with affecting affecting a positive or a ne negative perspective. All these pieces are sort of interwoven. They're like a woven piece that goes into the bigger weaving of the whole thing. You, you are responsible for what you carry around in your mind as an image, you see? That's the first part. So we, instead of saying just right thought and making, when you say right thought, you think, well, a thought just comes in my mind. So there isn't any responsibility. The one thing that, that Buddhism is wildly <laughs> notorious for when it comes to other religions. And we're not, we're not using a monotheistic, uh, you know, Godhead who is going to take care of things. See, um, is that we are personally responsible. So running through this, you are responsible for, you are responsible for the movement of mind's attention. You can train it to follow your intention and, and thereby train it to behave better than it normally does by just all over the place. People who have no knowledge of all these pieces have a real problem. You know, when people have a breakdown, it's where the mind ran away. They went, they're not insane, like out of their mind. They're actually caught inside their mind and everything's crashing and rolling around because no one ever sorted it out and explained all the pieces. And so eventually it's like, <gasps> and they just collapse. That's where they end up in the hospital, really in bad shape. So working in advocacy, I saw so many people, you know, that were crashing like this and never really was able to help them without this kind of information. But if I had had this kind of information, I could have shown them what's actually in there crashing in all, in all directions in the person's head without understanding uh, how, the bike how the bike is broken. When the bike breaks, how can you fix it? So it's the same thing when I, I've, I've been through a lot of training in my life in various things like sailing and riding and tennis. And I can remember the training in tennis. I had to know how many people play tennis where they know all the pieces of the racket completely <laughs> and the posts and the net and everything. If you didn't have a coach, you probably don't. You probably just went out and learned to swing and that sort of thing. We had to learn the guts of the whole thing. In riding, we had to know all the parts of the horse and all the parts of the saddle and all the parts of the girth and everything and why we had to wear boots and couldn't do it with sneakers we were insane if we did it in sneakers or we would bare feet you know bareback riding and bare feet you know you're you're insane why you know because we had to know how everything worked so we could be really good good at riding at sailing it was the same thing you can put a person in a boat and say here's the tiller steer the boat and maybe you can get them to duck their head because the wind is going to make this go back and forth unless you're me you get concussions all the time <laughs> 
<laughs> you know, but um, you had to learn all the parts of the boat and all the knots and how everything worked in order to race the boat. I was trying to explain to somebody yesterday, um, they couldn't understand um, what was the question that happened. One of the teachers had a student that actually uh, showed up and, and the question was, well, I don't see why we have to send this loving kindness to anybody else, to another spiritual friend. We, I mean, I do this for the purpose of my own happiness. My, and he didn't quite know what to say to the person when they said that. And I said, I said to him, you need to let the person, get the person to remember how they felt when they gave a gift to their mother or somebody growing up. Did they feel really good inside? That's really good kind of happiness. That's what we're talking about, right? And happiness is the byproduct of giving that gift. And this person had the idea, if you teach me meditation, you're teaching me how I can have and own and control happiness. You cannot control the happiness, you see? It's an element like everything existing, rising and existing and passing away as it go through life, you see? You can feed happiness and through right effort in, in the text, in the one some suit I read, the fourth step was to, after, um, yeah, the fourth step of right effort was now bring up, continue that, that wholesome feeling and, and create more feelings that feel like that. So what are you doing? What are you doing? You're training the mind. I want this kind of feeling, this kind of thing in my mind in front of me. One of the doorways to this was to, um, the doorways into getting the person to do that was to everything that comes to you first, forgive them, forgive them. I came up with forgive them, okay? And then use compassion to give, active compassion to give them space to vent or do whatever they need to do if something's happened, and then loving kindness, compassion, and then loving kindness. Now, I'm talking about actuating this. I'm not talking about how it comes up. It always comes up. Loving kindness turns into compassion. That's true, you know, and so forth. And forgiveness, if you learn to train your mind to forgive everything, tomorrow, get up, and for the next four days, forgive absolutely everything. What do I mean? That in my head? No. <laughs> I mean... Uh, the fact that the water didn't come for two days here <laughs> and I had two buckets a day to get through the whole day <laughs> or the faucet breaks because they didn't put it they didn't I found out they used probably ran out of the plumber probably ran out of screw I can tell you what happened he ran out of uh, out of screws to put in when he hooked the handle on he ran out of screws so he took another screw and he used it and it just came off in my hand and the water just sprayed down the front of me and i'm standing there laughing there's nothing to do but laugh <laughs> or when the ladies came to to clean this place for the retreat uh their method of cleaning this place was remarkable three buckets of water so you take everything off the floor and they just dump the water can you imagine across the floor in the whole entire unit and they forgot that the place is built a little bit tilted toward my bedroom <laughs> and I was in here and all of a sudden the water came under the door and I'm in I'm in water and it's I had to jump up and get claws at first I had this funny thing where I felt mad for a split second and then I just started laughing at the whole thing because it was nothing to do but laugh and put towels down and keep the water out and <laughs> and they didn't understand what was wrong with the water I had nothing <laughs> so I'm trying to go along with this whole you gotta have fun with life look you you know I studied something else one time before Buddhism and it was Kashmir Shaivism is a form of Hinduism and they give an online course and the very first thing that, that they gave in the very first lesson was the um, you have two choices in life nobody ever put it to me this way you can laugh or you can cry <laughs> She was like, no, the, the guru was like, no gray ground. You're either laughing or you're crying. That's what she said. 
And then she went into a torrential thing about if you're crying, your heart is getting messed up, your stomach, your intestines, your body, you're going to cramp when you're old, the whole thing, you know, and then she said, but if you're laughing, you're going to be good and you're going to feel good and stay stronger, longer and everything. And she just said, so it's your choice. And that was the end of the lesson. The second one was even more, more astounding, you know, having been raised in the Anglican church and with Catholic friends all around me, this was an astounding thing. The only sin is the idea of sin itself. And that was pretty much the whole lesson. <laughs> and you had to let that roll around and say, how did we get to this place? Because it isn't in there. In uh, the actual Bible, it's not there <laughs> in the whole New Testament. I've been through the New Testament a number of times, and it's not there. You know, this whole thing about the, about the confessional and everything, you know, and it's, <laughs> and so the Catholics have, they, it's difficult for them to come and say, okay, we're not going to do that anymore. We're just going to, so they can get very upset if you say, forgive yourself. You see, forgive yourself. They can get very upset. And, but I pointed out to a Catholic woman who was saying that to me one time. I said, wait a minute, wait a minute. I think I got this. And she said, what? I said, I think it's okay for me to forgive myself. Because uh, doesn't God want you to do the most you possibly can for yourself while you're on earth? Because the original Christianity ha didn't have a problem. It didn't have a problem with responsibility. It was there. But now it's slipped away, and now it's not there, and it's a problem for them that they, they confess it's a problem, you see? Okay, uh, so I think it's a good idea for you to forgive yourself, I told her, because then if you're forgiving yourself and you're thinking clearly, and then you go pray to God, you've got a better communication system, and everything is going to work better. And she tried it. She came back to me, and she said, you know, that's the greatest thing anybody ever told me. <laughs> I just, I just thought that was a good idea to try to go to, to God with a clear mind. And, and what we're teaching you clears your mind, doesn't it? It does. So when you're talking about imaging, it's a personal responsibility, what you carry in your mind. When we're talking about action and instead of the gross personal action, yeah, that's one way of teaching it. But when you're talking about the practice itself, we're teaching you a higher level of examination of the mind. And when you apply it, that to there, maybe we should call, um, maybe we should call the second kind uh, you, maybe we should call the second type of examination an examination of how the mind is operating within the meditation somehow to get it across. Uh, because it is possible to watch the mind just pop up these things, and it, it's like you didn't pop it up at all, okay? But you can change the movement of your mind's attention, how it behaves and moves around, can't you? Okay, by, by setting up the proper intention and teaching your mind that intention it wants to communicate is a way of communicating to it, this is how I want you to behave, yeah? I'm teaching you how, because I'm showing you again and again. And all of a sudden, it's in there like a little child. Of, oh, you mean that's what you mean? Oh, gosh, okay. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it starts working. Automatically, it starts working. And they come to me and say, how did that happen? I don't know how to tell you. The little guy inside, he's just like, I'm in here. I'm waiting for you to tell me what to do your whole life. And you never knew that you could tell that brain anything until neuroscience got into the research field. We never knew. It was perfectly acceptable, Sarah, 15 years ago to point to somebody and say, you know, this person can never change. Why do we even bother trying? It was perfectly acceptable. There are still people in the world who believe that way and will sit down and have a conversation. No, it isn't true. People can't change. Once they're an adult, they're locked in place. That's very sad. That's not true. You see? And they proved it now in the science. So it's going to, it changed a lot of things in, uh, 
in, in research, but in your, in your mind, the communication part, you, you get it, right? I mean, you, you get it with the imaging and the, that we're developing a communication system. So does that answer your question? Because the imaging, you're responsible for what you carry in your mind. Nobody else can put something in your mind except you and decide if you're gonna keep it there, feed it by paying attention to it and keep it there or change it, see? And, and the movement of mind's attention is based on the intention. We're feeding it if we understand, yeah? Does it make sense? Yeah, I think that's really, really helpful. Thank you, because um, I think the way I, I was interpreting it was linked to the, the very linear way the dependent links of origination happen. And I think that's, that's, that's still relevant, but you've brought out a much broader, well, I'm using the same word, perspective. And I think what's interesting about hearing that is it's very, um, it's very synchronistic with the whole twim approach of the spacious mind rather than the pointed mind. That's right. And the, the yeah. harmonious perspective is a spacious way of, yeah. of the, the way you're leaning your mind. And I, I think it's that, that spaciousness that comes through then all of those um, aspects yeah, of, it, of the path. It, it's not a real big spaciousness in terms of space, really. I mean, it's just long enough for the brain to stop reacting and, and take a hold of seeing what is essentially happening and make a decision to act. Yeah. 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 So it's very, very quick, but, but it, it's that spaciousness is so important when you eliminate the reaction, then you have a chance to say, well, let's forgive it right now for uh, the thing conversation, I guess the other day was why forgive it? I said, forgive it for heaven's sakes, because everybody on the earth has been through COVID for a year and a half or more, a year and a half of lockdown. You people have been put in solitary. All of us have been essentially without COVID, we never would have experienced living in solitary like we have universally on the globe it's amazing and and so we have this opportunity to look at ourselves and if we if we can just get more people to understand that then they say oh there's something to do <laughs> instead of weeping and mourning and falling into depression and aggravation and anger and furiousness and then going out and marching in the streets and getting shot and the rest of it yeah well I don't think whether it doesn't really matter to me where this whole thing came from anymore. The fact that people were put universally in a, in a situation, we used to say people have nothing in common. Well, we all have the same thing. We have blood, right? If there was an accident, I'd be looking for A positive or B positive or O positive blood to help you. I didn't check whose it was, but do you want the blood? I can save you. You see, <laughs> that was going on during a civil rights period in the 60s. A person, a white person who would say, I don't want this blood. What do you mean you don't want the blood? <laughs> and then finally they would just say, okay, die. It's okay with me. Go ahead, die. That's what we have today. You know, it, it was pathetic. And then we have the thing, well, how can we say all these people on the earth are universally have something in common? And Ronald Reagan comes and talks about an alien invasion. <laughs> And I thought that was great. If there's an alien invasion on Earth, then everybody has to come together to solve the problem to continue to exist. But now what happened? You have COVID. Everybody has blood and everybody has COVID in their life. Everybody has this universal thing in common. And there's got to be more than that. And more than that is the brain and how it operates. And if we could just stop a moment and take a look at how this is operating, you would find the potential of the human mind is a remarkable thing. But how do you access it? You train it. And then the confusion comes. They say, well, when we teach you the meditation, don't do anything, right? We say, just watch, just be the watcher, don't we? 
but do you remember the story of what I told you? The man came to the Buddha and he said he wanted to learn meditation. And the Buddha said, why? And he said, because I lost control of my life. I want control back of my life. I don't have control. The Buddha wasn't sure if he wanted to teach him or not. And he sort of used his brain as, you know, powers to look in this man. And the man really wanted personal control to actually make everything happen. Then he turned to the man. And he says, I, okay, I'll teach you, but you're not going to like it. And he said, what do you mean? And he said, in order to teach you to learn how your mind operates and how all of this works, you have to give up all control so that you can see how it naturally works, naturally operates first. From there, if you come out and if you keep practicing what I tell you to do, your mind starts to get more spacious and you begin to understand things more logically and see them essentially correctly and everything. What do you come out the other end? You actually end up having more control than anybody else has because you know how to let go of control and see how they're working and how you're working. So actually, who's more powerful? The person running around saying, I've got it, I've got the company, I'm going to the top, I'm gonna to control it all. <laughs> and you know what? When he gets up to the top of the pillar and he climbs over the top and he's in the top and everybody else is below him and he's the big shot, guess what? When he gets married and has kids and has to deal with his life, Everything operates the same as the guy at the bottom who isn't even on climbing the tower yet. All the dramas are the same. The problems are the same. The issues are the same. It's hysterical. So when you go get the, go find the, um, the thing about the butterfly and the pillar or something, that little book, it's online somewhere about the corporate guy who was climbing up and the other, butter, the other worm was waiting at the bottom to turn into a butterfly. <laughs> She didn't want to go up. She let him climb up. He stepped on people and knocked all the other worms off the tower. When he got up there and he creeped over the top of the tower and got on top, he saw all these people fighting. When he listened to how they were fighting, they were fighting about the same things they were fighting about at the bottom. You know, I live in an area where the food is B food. B, like A, B, C, it's B food. <laughs> okay, I find this out last week. That's why sometimes I don't do so well. But the whole principle is there's food. <laughs> you know, there's food. And the issues about my food and your food, if you have A food or A plus food or something, is the issue is all the same. Isn't that funny? No new dramas. No new scripts for movies at all. Yeah? You? Yeah? <laughs> <laughs> um, could, do you, can you remember what that reference is about the, uh, the person going to the Buddha wanting control? Because that's a very lovely reference. I can't remember where it came from, and it could have been in one of the books that one of the monks wrote. It could have been a story. I don't remember. I just, it just always comes up in my mind, you know, okay. about okay. that story because he had to stop and think, mm. you know. And it's like when, it, it, it does remind me of Vacha in the Vajakati Sutta in 62, when you read the front part of the Sutta, Vajakati's going on about, you know, this is how I did this, and this is what this person's teaching, and this is what this, and he's doing all that stuff, behaving the same way, and, and then the Buddha just really gives it to him straight. He says it in, funny thing, I told you about section 18, didn't I, about you should check this out. I'm going to check it out again because I didn't have time to do it all the way. But you go through all the suttas in the Majjhima Nikaya and yep. you look up section 18 in each sutta, okay? Oh, okay. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You told me. And, yes. then, yeah. and see, see what comes up. It's really interesting. The key point of the sutta a lot of times is sitting there in, this is in 72. You go to 72 section 18. And the question is, is it okay for me to be doing other things and mixing it into my instructions? Do pr other practices, stuff that I learned, and mix it into your instructions? What do you think about that? You know, first he's talking, I mean, this, he comes up with all the stuff he wants to talk to the Buddha about. Here it is. The world is eternal. The world is finite. The world is 
not eternal. The world is not finite. The world is this. All these questions you're not supposed to spend time thinking about. He comes to the Buddha with them, see? And um, the death of the Tathagata, does he exist or not exist? Or does he both exist and not? And he goes on and on and on. He's just babbling. And then uh, after that, finally, Buddha says, it's section 18. It is enough for, to cause you bewilderment, Vacha, enough to cause you confusion. If you keep thinking about all these things, you're just blocking yourself from getting on the path, blocking yourself from going down and making progress is what he's saying. For the Dhamma is profound. It's hard to see and, and, and hard to understand peaceful and sublime, unattainable by mere reasoning. You can't just read books or sit and have discussions again and again, or study Abhidhamma till you turn blue. And you can't understand the Dhamma and the practice combined, and therefore you can't, you can get to Sotapanna, but that's probably the only place you can go. Beyond that, you can't go. It's subtle to be experienced by the wise, which means the, you must understand the dependent origination from, from feeling, uh, I'm sorry, six sense doors to the birth of the reaction. You have to understand that part. That's where the seven link chart came from. It is hard for you to understand it when you hold another view. Here you go. Accept another teaching, approve of another teaching, pursue a different training, and follow a different teacher. So don't come, he's saying basically, don't come to me and say, but we do this. Can I put this in this? Can I do that? Can I do that? Have you listened to how simple the instructions are? Why would you want to spoil the cake? You know, can I use duck eggs instead of chicken eggs? Can I, let me see, can I, can I use salt instead of baking soda? Hey, what about if I use margarine instead of real butter? Am I going to get the same taste in the cake? No. It's the same thing with, with Buddha Gautama's practice that he's teaching. And then he says, uh, you know, Vacha, um, I'll, I'll question you about a certain set of things in return. And then he gets in a conversation with him after that. And he starts to um, straighten things out. But um, this person the other day, she wanted the answers right like that in a box. And I said to her, does the baby get born? And does he crawl and then go to the Olympics to run? <laughs> Will the person come to play the piano and when they see the instrument after learning Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, do they get to give a concert in Carnegie Hall? <laughs> you know, it's endless how we can point to this and, and the assumption that you can come to the Buddhist teaching and get one sutta and say you know the whole thing. <laughs> that's my favorite one. Okay, the whole, you understand all of it from one sutta. Um, and that sutta doesn't give you everything. Um, that's where we have to see the best thing you can do is try to fit it all together. Try to fit it all together. That's the best thing we can do, okay? Thank you. Yeah.